Hello, this is Vince here from ShoutCastStrategy.com. I'm bringing you the finals of the second ShoutCast Strategy tournament. As you can see, Paul is playing against Crane, who is spawning as Protoss. He is a Protoss player, and Paul has spawned as Zerg this matchup. Now, unfortunately for Paul, I bet he would rather do a macro game based on what I've seen from him so far. He is very, very close to Crane, so that's going to make it a lot harder for the Zerg to macro up very hard. As you can see, they are currently talking about underwear in the chat, so I am going to completely avoid that conversation. Anyways, this is also a best of three matchup. The first starting map up is the starting map is obviously Metalopolis, and Crane doing the smart thing of starting his wall off since he doesn't know what race Paul is. But at least they are agreeing to be best friends now, so no matter what happens, they're both come out winners. Now, based on the timing of that probe, Paul might know that Crane is up here, since that was a fairly quick scout. But then again, random draws very quick scouts all the time, harassing a little bit with that probe. Always a fun thing to do when you're Protoss, and if you can avoid taking health damage, then it doesn't really hurt anything. Coming back to poke at some probes again, no, nope, just keeping an eye out, seeing when that spawning pool does go down. Uh, surprise the spawning pool, looks like it's about to go down. Yes, there, now it's going down. And I expect to see Extractor very shortly thereafter. And as you can see in Crane's base, he's got a gateway going down and his gas is also going down. Paul not wanting that probe to go where he has to worry about him, so he's just letting a drone chase it around always. It's not a horrible strat since that allows you to not have to worry about proxy pylons in your base and think horrible things like that. Things you don't really want to lose to in a tournament. As Crane is also doing something similar and throwing up his second pylon in the back here to avoid a Nidus network going up where he can't see it. Now Paul is scouting. He has seen the Cyber Next course. So that should make him happy and should make him feel either safe to fast expand or safe enough that the two gate rush isn't coming. Keeping this drone hidden back here so he can pop up and see what other type of tech crane will be going for next. Paul, a little late on that gas. Normally, uh, sort of like to get that first gas a lot faster so they can get the metal me metabolic boost faster. But Paul declining to do that, getting his second Overlord out. Queen is almost out, and he did go ahead and throw up his expansion since he did see that Cyber Core. He knew it wasn't going to be a two-gate pressure, but it looks like a fat, well, a warp gate's coming up. Uh, and I like what Crane is doing right here. He's throwing a second pylon right behind this one, and this is an incredibly strong wall off. This used to be a little weak with just this one pylon here, a couple bane links, well, more than a couple, but some bane links busting that, and then run, being able to run all the way around like that and into the base can be very dangerous. But now that he's got a doubled up pylons right here, that makes this structure a lot stronger. Ooh, and poor Paul's Overlord is going to get sniped. This was. Uh, a bad idea by Paul, if you are a Zerg player and you see a Cyber Core go down, get all your Overlords away from his base since these Stalkers will come out and they do kill Overlords very, very quickly. Losing that Overlord does hurt because now he's got to spend another 100 minerals on a new Overlord, but luckily one was popping out right there. And I'm going to switch to the production tab where we have 10 Zerglings coming out. So Paul, getting out a bunch of Zerglings, is researching his speed now, and his expansion is up with one single drone coming out and don't see a second queen coming out. It's kind of surprising to me. It does more. I like the placement of this overlord. It gives him a good vision right near his ramp without being able to be shot unless he has air. And looking in uh, Crane's base, he isn't going to do anything crazy. Throwing up a second gateway, throwing up a stargate. Oh, haha! <laughs> yes, not doing anything crazy at all. I absolutely love this play. I love stargates against Zerg. It makes them have to worry about void rays and phoenixes. I know it looks like this probe's been scouting around looking for any hidden expansions since that can be a problem. And that probe's going to run into a bunch of Zerglings and die a horrible screaming death. Overlord chilling out right here. This is a relatively good place for this Overlord as it can it will see any fast uh, air texts. A lot of times players will cause their air to go right around like this into their enemy's base. Almost the same path the Overlord took. 
and it looks like we have a void ray and just to prove my point that is beautifully rallied and this is beautifully positioned so he will see that void ray when it comes out especially since it will stop right here and start shooting this overlord now does Paul currently have, yes he is currently morphing into a lair, so he will be able to get his hiders out relatively soon, and one void ray isn't that dangerous, as long as he has a second queen, which he still hasn't built yet, that is... That is a huge, huge surprise. And now this Void Rage is shooting this Overlord, so Paul knows he has to do something about that. Has to be getting a second queen, uh, throwing down an Evolution Chamber, so I guess he can get four colonies, which, I, here comes a second queen. That should have come out a lot faster for multiple reasons, this Void Rage being just one of them. Zerglings are now running out. Uh, looks like they're going to be going up towards the base as uh, that Void Ray is closing in to see if they can do any harassment or any damage since he's going to have a lot of trouble dealing with this one solitary Void Ray until this Queen comes out and it will be a while before that Queen comes out. It actually looks like it may be just in time. Looks like we do now have Spore Crawlers going down. I would love to see a Hydra Den go down for him. I'm not quite sure why there isn't one. And the Queen is going to come over here, but that Void Ray is charged. And that Queen is going to die very, very quickly. Needs to run the Queen away so it doesn't die in a horrible, screaming agony of blood explosion death. But it does. Luckily, the charge is lost. Otherwise, he could have taken out that Spore Crawler, started taking out the Rotorn and things like that. Here comes a second Queen, but... And this queen should be able to uh, repel this void ray because it does get charged. However, a little scared. Second void ray coming in to the uh, expansion should be targeting overlords or the hatchery itself. I really can't believe the hydra den didn't go up a lot sooner. That would have been key once hydras come out. Void rays die very quickly to hydras. That spore crawler uh, forcing that void ray away. This Void Ray looks like it might find this Overlord back here. Not quite. Then this it looks like the expansion will fall. Uh, I, one Hydra list currently being produced. There are two Queens, so these two Queens could come down and might be able to save this. Yes, that it, they are saving this expansion, which is very nice. And there are Spore Crawlers back here, so the Void Ray will not be able to do anything back there. Meanwhile, while all this has been happening, Crane has been setting up his natural, which is a very smart idea. While you're pushing out, distracting your enemy, throw up your own expansion. It's a very good timing on that. Nice transfer immediately of his probe, so he gets lots of good income, and hiding his Void Ray in the back here. Oh, it looks like Crane is currently also getting a Dark Shrine, really trying to use every type of little cheesy tactic he can. I don't really want to use that word, but every trick in the playbook, I guess, would be a better way to say that. Starting off with early Void Rays, and now going to be sending in Dark Templars to see what kind of damage they can do. Having one cannon in the front of his base, which almost seems excessive, but... It might help deter any type of uh, Zergling run by or anything like that. I absolutely love this huge strong wall in at his ramp. And it looks like Crane is going to move out and push the front of Paul's base. Did he get the Hydra range upgrade? No, he has not quite got that yet. And here comes the battle with the Void Ray coming in as well. It looks like there may not be enough to take care of this beautiful force field going down so the Hydras cannot run away. Not going to quite be able to hold this off. Uh, looks like, nope, Paul, uh, Crane is going to back up right now, so was able to hold that off. I think Crane could have kept pushing. I don't think there was quite enough from Paul to hold that off. And I'm really surprised to see him neglect this range upgrade. That would have allowed his Hydras to stay back a little further. But now he does have Spore Crawlers and Spine Crawlers coming down to help defend his natural. Now one thing that's important as a Zerg is when you're getting all this aggression, you need to keep remember to keep building drones even if you want to build more and more units instead of 10 Zerglings, do 8 Zerglings and 1 drone. If we switch to the income tab, you can see how far behind Paul is in the harvester count. Crane has a whopping 52 probes to Paul's 28 and part of that reason is due to the fact that Paul is feeling the early aggression and keeps wanting to pump out units. Uh, Crane really concentrating with Zealots and Dark Templar, a uh, very heavy ground melee force. It looks like this may be a very scary push for 
Paul. I'm not sure he has enough to hold it off, and I don't really agree with this building Zerglings since he did see so many Zealots. They're not going to be that effective, but I guess they will help hold off the Zealots a little bit. And there are two Spine Crawlers here to help. Spine Crawlers are great against the uh, Zealots, and he does realize that there are Dark Templar here, so he starts building an Overseer. Luckily, the Spore Crawler is a detector and was able to stop the uh, Dark Templars. I I find it weird that Crane used Dark Templars just in his main army, uh, especially since there were already Spore Crawlers up by the mineral lines. Uh, he didn't know the Spore Crawler was here, but ooh, it looks like, I'm sorry, uh, Paul did continue on that push, trying to make sure Crane isn't trying to do anything fancy, and Crane is throwing up an expansion right now, has that pylon already built, and I don't think these four uh, Hydralists will be able to hold off that force, and apparently Paul agrees with me and backs up. Uh, this queen is low on the energy, so that's good. It means it's been using its uh, charge on something, and that one's not doing too bad either, so doing a fairly good job of spitting larva. However, uh, Crane is about to take his third base, and this would be absolutely devastating once this goes up and the transfer goes down, since Paul's been behind in the income this entire game, and if he gets further behind in the income, he'll stand absolutely no chance. Uh, is getting the upgrades for his hydralist which is good they're already at one armor and he did get the range upgrade which i which i think is absolutely huge to help deal with it and throwing down another spine crawler to help with the any incoming push i would still like to see roaches come out he does have a lot of gas so that shouldn't be a consideration instead of building these zerglings i'd rather see roaches especially since roaches and hydras upgrades uh are beneficial to each other i'm not sure if he uh he is building a second evo chamber so he can start doing double upgrades uh that's not an evil chamber, that's embarrassing. His other one over here, and he is researching a uh, weapon right now, so he needs to start researching ground as well. Paul is hiding an expansion over here. When you're desperate, you need to do what you can do. And he's going to see the cannons here and turn around immediately or fight anyways. Um, this is... Ooh, High Templar out. Those Hydralists are going to die so fast. We absolutely melt to those uh, psionic storms and the zealots just to finish it off. I, I don't agree with attacking with those photon cannons here, and I really would have loved to see more roaches come out from Paul. He, he It's not like he's low on gas and has to manage it. I think he's building way too many zerglings. Now he's getting a bunch of roaches out, uh, and he is getting the uh, speed upgrade, which should have also been done a long time ago, but uh, hindsight's, you know, 2020 type thing. And it looks like Paul did get away with hiding this. I do not think that Crane saw it. Yes. So very nice hidden expansion from Paul. If this gets up and running, could bring him back into the game. But this force is starting to look really, really scary. Uh, he is at 117 food while Paul is at a measly 79. So it's just a matter of time before Crane decides to end this game. Crane is also doing a very good job with his upgrade. He is currently researching a uh, weapon 2 upgrade on his uh, army. And with the Observer, he is able to kill these creep tumors as well. That is always a helpful thing to help stop the spread of creep, which is very helpful for the Zerg player. And trying to stay back as much as he can. Um, I don't think there's quite enough roaches uh, here to make a difference. And the Psy Storms do go down. They don't do amazing against roaches, but they do help. And they're just, just too many units from Crane. Uh, uh, army composition was finally right for Paul, but there's just way too much stuff here. Too many High Templar, too many Zealous, too many Stalkers. Just the food uh, was too much to overcome. Now transforming uh, into an Archon. I believe Paul will GG here in just a minute, so... I don't see that there's anything he could possibly do right now. Uh, just a little too many Zerglings. He is pulling all the drones off the line, though, so really trying to make something happen, but these Zealots will just slice and dice these drones so fast. This Archon looks like it will go down, so at least he does kill an Archon, and I guess that's what he was shooting for, because now he GG's. So our victor from the last Shoutcast Strategy Tournament is going down 0-1 against a very strong Protoss player. Uh, Crane did a very good job expanding... Uh, is high on the money in gas because he is on three bases. Uh, it looks like he is taking the gold right now as well as he's pushing out just to make sure. So very, very good things from Crane. Very solid play from him. Um, I think Paul went way too heavy on the Zerglings with how heavy Crane went on the 
charge a lot. I really would have liked to see more roaches, more hydralis. It's a very, very strong combination of units that I've really had been having a lot of success with in my Zerg versus Protoss. So stay tuned for the next game. I hope you enjoyed watching this one. Uh, thanks for watching.